Good afternoon. Welcome back to my studio, garden or house, which is no longer the Khan's palace, but simply my studio or garden or house, in which I will be reading to you over the next few weeks some stories from a book I put together called A Calvinian Architecture. I put it together in 2007 from extrapolated from my PhD thesis, which consisted of my translation of each Invisible Cities, which I read to you recently, and then added to that were two stories, one of houses I wanted to live in or buy somewhere in the world, and the other was of journeys I've made. Most days I'll only be reading one of those two stories because space won't allow me to read two, but Perhaps today I can fit you in. The very first one, the first chapter of the first octave, Diomida. Section two. She comes to see me in order to find the red tutu hidden somewhere up in the mezzanine in her old room. Someone else lives in the house now and she lives elsewhere with her mother. But over the last two years, she's frequently spent silent hours up there looking through piles of clothes, bags, boxes, books, fragments, toys, and endless odds and ends. She always returns from these voyages in a silent, still space. At first, I used to check up on her every 10 minutes or so probably out of anxiety of what she would find at the hurts I would conjure up, out of guilt and sadness, out of desire to alleviate hers. Now I let her go, I've come to understand she's simply digging through an archaeological site very slowly and very carefully. Earlier today I'd looked for the tutu myself but failed to find any trace of it. I wanted to surprise her with it. She now silently returns to my half of the yard with her arms full of its redness. She stays another few minutes and then tells me she has to leave. She holds me close for a long time, really close. I walk her outside to the back lane and watch her go until she reaches the end. Her arms are laden with plastic bags, filled with gowns, shoes, and the red tutu. Then she stops, puts down the bags, waves, and disappears. As I turn to go inside, it seems that for a moment, she's there again, riding up the lane in her shiny new bicycle, laughing, laughing, laughing early one Christmas morning, not too, not so very long ago. This is section three of the first octave, first chapter, Diomeda. Lorena Aguayo, 52-9-467-86290. That's her Mexico City phone number. Carayom de Cita, she said, actually, San Angel. We're a hundred floors up in the Sears building in Chicago, the one shaped like a chisel. There's a bar that looks out over the Chicago suburbs and the Illinois haze far away, far, far away somewhere. And down there writes Roby House with the inlaid balsa lights, fittings carved out to cast shadows on the floor that look like moonlight being filtered through leaves. Mysterious, she murmurs. Then she describes her house in San Angel. Promise me you'll come to Mexico City, she says. Suddenly turning to look at me, I close my eyes then 
and I see the house, a white wall separating the sunlight from the sandy soil. Three reddish clouds float far away over a perfectly symmetrical volcano. A violet shade patch is stretched under a green pine. Running water seeps silently into the red soil. Leaving from there, you come to a terrace garden and if you turn around and look up, there you are on the balcony. Looking out over the valley once again out to the you that does not know how he arrived here or how he might now leave. Thank you for listening. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon for the first octave, second chapter, Izzy Daughter. Until then, enjoy your afternoon. <laughs>